Hey guys, welcome to another Walk-In Wednesday. Today I have a rare opportunity for you to see some really, really rare guns. In fact, I wanted to get this done right away. As soon as these guns came in the door, I want to get them back out the door because I'm scared to even have possession of them for even uh, one day. Uh, these are two and a half Singers, the 1911 A1, which is generally the World War II variation versus the 1911 from World War I. But uh, the Singer is a very, very rare gun. Some of you are already very, uh, very aware of that. I have uh, one, two, we'll talk more about these, and a half. Two and a half Singers. Uh, or as I said to Randy earlier, this is somebody's house right here. This is a house. Uh, you're talking $200,000, get you a pretty nice home here in this area. Um, so let's go over the Singer, a little bit of background about it. They are very unique. I do not own these, and they are not being offered for sale. Uh, a good friend of mine, collector in the area, I knew he had two Singers, and I said, hey, I'd love to do a video about the Singer. Um, could you bring him in? And lo and behold, he had two and a half. I'll explain that. So the Singer, uh, Singer sewing machine, uh, before the war started, 1939, got a contract to make uh, 500 Singer 1911 Colts. Now, why Singer? Uh, good question. I'm not sure why, but the Ordnance Department uh, came to Singer and said, how quickly could you tool up uh, from your sewing machine equipment into making uh, 1911 Colts? Um, and so it was an experiment. I, I assume they gave them money from the government to do a test. How long would it take for you to tool up and make 500 uh, guns? Why would they do that in 1939? By the way, every Singer, there's only 500 made. Every Singer was made before the war even started. Uh, a little conjecture would tell me that the, the government knew that we were going to go to war. And when we did, everybody was going to have to revamp uh, consumer-based uh, product to military-based product. Why Singer? Again, a little bit of conjecture. As I read um, the history of the Singer Sewing Machine Company, they made, very, uh, they made the world's best sewing machines and did it very well. They had factories in Europe. In fact, they had a factory in Scotland, and they had a factory in Germany. So in 1939, as you know, the war started in Europe, but not in the United States. So my, my thought is, first of all, Germany was already using, uh, they, they basically took over the factory and were making war equipment for the Nazis. And in Scotland, England was already at war with Germany. So Europe was at war, and the United States was not pulled into it yet, but they knew they were going to have to um, make equipment that would help defend uh, freedom. And eventually, the United States, of course, got into the war. So before Pearl Harbor, 500 singers were made. Why? As a test to see how quickly we could ramp up and, um, and put out 500 of these. Why did they stop making them? The truth is they were so well made. Uh, singer had much more precision equipment than the other gun makers. Um, and it was so uh, precision, such good quality that they ended up uh, uh, saying, never mind about the 1911s, they had other companies make them. I'll go over that in a minute. Um, but they decided to have them make uh, bomb site equipment, uh, uh, artillery sites, and also um, aviation, aviation equipment that went to uh, Europe and the United States. So let's talk about production. Um, during World War II, the largest producers of the 1911 A1 was actually Remington Rand. Remington Rand, you may know, was a typewriter company. So you have a typewriter company making, uh, making 1911 A1s. Colt, actually overall, Colt made more 1911s than anybody. But during World War II, they made about a, a, a half a million, whereas Remington Rand made about 900,000. And then Ithaca made about uh, 400,000. And then U.S. Switch and Signal, uh, many of you know, that's a, also a very expensive gun. Uh, U, U.S. Switch and Signal made about... 50,000, and Singer, the sewing machine company, made about 500. Uh, precision made. Now, this gun probably is over $100,000, and the record price on a mint one of these, sold at an uh, auction a few years back, over $400,000 for a mint example sold on auction, record price. So what is this worth? Certainly over $100,000. Um, the second Singer I wanted to show you has no finish, no serial number, no markings other than the uh, company logo and then United States property. 
So um, this was uh, found locally. And by the way, uh, these were made in Elizabeth, New Jersey, which is not that far from us. It's just a two hour drive up to Turnpike. So these kind of guns do show up once in a while where people worked in the factory. There's two theories. One, they call it a lunch pail gun. Maybe you've heard of that before. Um, lunch pail gun is, you know, a term they use for employees taking home parts and putting them together at home, basically stealing guns part by part uh, by taking them out in their lunch pail. Uh, this could be a lunch pail gun, but I suspect it was a gun that was made after the uh, 500 were done. So they had overruns on the parts. Uh, this to me, because it has some blued parts and some uh, unfinished parts, this one was probably put together post-production. By the way, they are in a specific serial range number, S800,001 to S800,500. They made 500, they have to be in that serial range. This has no serial number, again, uh, either a lunch pail gun or it was, they, they had leftover slides and frames and other parts. Uh, so somebody put together a gun and a factory worker probably took it home with permission or without. Uh, somebody from the factory took this home with no serial number. I doubt that it was ever, um, it was ever issued. The half. This is a half a Singer. Um, this is parkerized. Uh, by the way, you can see that this, uh, the Singers all had blue finish. Remember, 19, about 1940. Um, so they were blued finish. Then later on, uh, parkerized finish. So somebody took a Singer slide, I suspect, again, a leftover slide, um, put onto a Colt frame. Um, so it's a half a Singer. First and foremost, don't buy a Singer without consulting with somebody who knows what they're doing. Somebody smarter than me, by the way, because if I ever bought a Singer, which not sure I ever would, but if I ever bought one, I, I know people that I could contact. There are known serial number you know, there are known singers out there that have been authenticated. And if one came out of the woodwork, I would want to get it checked out thoroughly by some experts. People generally will engrave the serial number or engrave the markings. We've had some come through here, not singers, but other guns where somebody wants to boost the value. So they maybe put it in a, a certain serial range or they change the markings to make it military issued. Uh, so you have to be real careful. The other, other factor is... Um, Look at the P, uh, the P on the top of the slide on the um, Colt. It is right side up on the Singers. The, the P is upside down. Also, uh, the inspector proof is JKC. Singer is the only one. It was John K. Clements. Uh, they were the only ones that had that inspector mark. Um, of course, the, the Singer marking. And the test that I love the best, remember I said they, they made such a quality piece. Um, the tolerances or the, uh, the quality of, of the metal work was so precise um, that you'll, you'll, you can feel the difference. Uh, this would be a Colt. I'm going to hold it up to the mic. This would be a Colt. Hopefully you can. That's basically it, it shakes because the, the, the parts do not fit together quite exactly right. And it's okay. They, they function fine. I'm not criticizing the quality of the gun. But... You can hear that versus nothing. <laughs> the tolerances are so tight, um, and it works so smoothly. Take the magazine out. Like a well-oiled machine, just like a sewing machine. So the Singer versus uh, the other manufactured guns, these are very rare. Uh, be careful buying one. There's a lot of uh, things you want to look at, the serial range, the markings the inspector proof, and the quality of the gun. Uh, again, this is a really rare opportunity. I, I'm holding these for about one day and then quickly get them out of here because I don't want to be responsible for over $200,000 worth of guns just sitting right here. Two and a half singers in one place. You'll not see that again, I don't think. One more thing. You know, I don't like a, a monologue. Uh, I love this to be interactive. So I would like to hear from you guys. What do you think is the most obscure U.S. company that made military equipment in World War II? Uh, so if it, for, and don't say IBM because I already said that one. IBM made carbines and there's other 
uh, companies. But when I think of Singer sewing machine making military equipment, I think, wow, you know, what's the connection? So you guys write to me and tell me, um, maybe I'll learn something new. I'd love to learn something new. What is the most obscure company that you can think of that ended up making military equipment that they just don't seem to fit together? Uh, comment below, write to us, and then make sure you read the comments because we can all learn from each other. That's what interactive is all about. Hey, check it out. Push the subscribe button. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hey, check this out. Push the subscribe if you want to be notified about our videos or pick one of these re recommended videos.